What did it say in 1 Corinthians 15? It said then he would what? Reign. So when he comes, those who are what? Being resurrected, who are going to reign with him for a thousand years? And listen to what it says. But the rest of the dead. So this means there's a group resurrected after, right? At the end of tribulation, which is after 2,000 years is done. And then the rest of the dead, not until after the millennial reign, which is 3,000 years from his death and resurrection. Okay? Um, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Starting to make more sense? For those that were that were confused within it, trying to understand. You see, this is all the story of the resurrection of the dead. He tells you it's at the end of trumpets. He's telling you it's when the end comes. He's telling you it's when he has all power and all authority. It tells you when he's going to be reigning. And that during this reigning for a thousand years, the last one he's going to destroy is death. See? Verse 27, for he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. Who put all things under Christ's feet? His father, right? And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Huh. Gets interesting, doesn't it? You see? When you read about this, you can read about this more in, uh, what is it, Romans? Is it Romans 11? Listen to this. Romans 11, Romans 11. Gentiles grafted in, the fullness thereof. Listen to this. Romans chapter 11, verse, starting in verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but right, he's talking about the Jews, right? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're to provoke them to jealousy. So imagine when the pre-trib comes and the jealousy that will come from that, right? Now, if the fall of them, okay? So if the fall of the Jews be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles in as much I, as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, you see the church, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? but life from the dead. Who was given the promise? The Jews, right? Abraham. Even Daniel was told to lie in his plot until the last day. The resurrection of the dead is at the end of tribulation, in that seventh year of trumpets. Okay, we're going to keep going. Uh, da, 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 maybe I should be in jeopardy. Okay, resurrection. Okay, watch this. Now let's keep going with this other stuff that I have pulled up. And that is, okay. Let me show you this. You see, 
one of the one of the main questions is okay we can now show that it's post and we're going to spend some more time in it showing some other things but that doesn't really say that it can't also be you know a pre-trib resurrection of the dead or a, a mid-trib rapture resurrection of the dead well then these things that we read in scripture don't make any sense right watch this where was that uh philippians I'd read it from here, but I want to have it with the Esort. Okay, it is Philippians 1. Let's go to Esort. Let's go to Philippians chapter 1 and read what Paul said. This is what he said. Philippians 1, verse, uh, ver starting in verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I want not. For I am in a strict between two, having a desire to depart to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, I abide in the flesh. I mean, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you see what he's saying here everybody knows this one right paul's saying man i'm i'm between a, a straight here right i i would much rather go and be with the lord but i'm here with you in the flesh because you need me that's what he's telling them right i know why i have to remain and i have to remain it's for you guys but i would much rather be out of this flesh and what be with christ so a lot of the question that people have is, are all the dead that have died in Christ since, uh, since his death and resurrection, since the spirit came, is everybody that's dead in Christ still in their grave waiting? The answer is no. The answer is no. They're already with Christ. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You understand, we don't need these flesh suits. What would you need this flesh suit to be changed to go to heaven for? There's no point. You're not going to be like Christ where you're going to be coming and going. It's the spiritual realm. There's no need for, a flesh, for any flesh. There is no resurrection from the dead because everybody that already died in Christ as a Luke pre-trib person, but did so over the last 2,000 years before the escape, is already there in his presence. The reason for the pre-trib that are being taken before it all begins is because theirs is not the tribulation. Those that are in Christ must be saved first. They've got to be removed before it can all begin. There is no resurrection of the dead at the beginning. There's no need. 